That's them, the Billy Boys. Hello, hello, we are the Billy Boys. Hello, hello, we are the Billy Boys. The tradition of gang formation in Glasgow stretches back to the late 19th century. The city in its own has been mainly Protestant, but in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, large numbers of Roman Catholic Irish immigrants came to the west coast of Scotland, drawn by jobs in the local industries in Scotland. And with the increasing rate of unemployment, Protestants were fed up and blamed that on Catholics. In this context of history, emerged the Billy Boys who were very brutal and violent in their times. In this episode, we'll explore the real Razor Gang of the Billy Boys. As it's shown in the series of Peaky Blinders, the Billy Boys has a military-style behavior. They march in formation as one group and they compose their own songs and music. The main aim of the Billy Boys was to terrify the Catholic population, who were mainly Irish immigrants, and make them feel as unwelcome as possible. Their name originates from William Orange, King Billy, who secured Protestant rule in England and Scotland, as well as Ireland in 1690 with victory at the Battle of the Boyne. The Billy Boys used to clash a lot with other gang rivalries in the city of Glasgow like the Norman Conks, who were a Catholic gang that operated in the same ways. The two gangs often got into knife fights in the east end of the city, the Billy Boys would meet at Bridgeton Cross, their claimed territory. The Norman Conks would gather in a street which was roughly half a kilometer south. The fact that the two were so close geographically caused many fights. The head of the Billy Boys was named Billy Fullerton. Fullerton's grandson said to a Scottish newspaper, as a lad, it wasn't unusual to see men with missing ears, noses and cut faces. They didn't call him the Razor King for nothing. Fullerton often gave anti-immigrant speeches and supported the fascist ideology back then. According to the former journalist, Robert Jeffrey, Fullerton created a well-organized unit. It was so disciplined, it was like a private army. At that time when there was mass unemployment, being with Fullerton and his gang gave the young men a sense of power. At their peak, the Billy Boys outnumbered and intimidated the police with up to 800 active young members in the clan. From Liverpool University's History Department, Dr. Andrew Davis considers that the gangs which claimed to protect the people, were actually preying on them, extorting money from shopkeepers, publicans and passers-by and collecting a fortune by this systemic source of income. Dr. Davies says, The present-day perception of the gangs as only ever fighting among themselves and not posing a threat to the local community is quite misguided. They like to portray themselves as representing or defending a community, a street or a religious group, but can also be seen as preying on members of the community they claim to represent. It's claimed that the Billy Boys were demanding money from people owning pubs, publicans.it is said that was as much as £5 a week, which equals at the time the weekly wage of a manual worker. Threats were made to the owners' families in case they did not pay up. Well, on the surface, the Billy Boys claimed that they collected money for protection and for paying fines of gang members and look after families of those sent to prison. Another source of income came from giving protection to political figures. Fullerton, the head of the Billy Boys, established a Glasgow branch for Sir Oswald Mosley, the British fascist leader, as well as providing Mosley with bodyguards. This political protection and affiliation must have provided them with enough cash to run their operations at the time. 